If you wanted one organization, one ethos, to explain the trajectory of Boris Johnson, this mountain of lies we talk about, this complete incompetence when it comes to dealing with the coronavirus, one organization or group of people, it would be the media cartel. Now, once upon a time, the fourth estate was supposed to keep an eye on government. These days, they have merged. It's a corporate merger between the oligarch-owned mainstream press, mainly, and the Conservative Party in its upper echelons. I mean, one obvious proof of that is where does the Prime Minister come from? He's a journalist who worked at The Telegraph as a columnist, was paid what he called chicken feed, £250,000 a year. His senior lieutenant, Michael Gove, great mates with Rupert Murdoch and regular columnist in the Sunday Times, Allegra Stratton. She's married to the political editor of The Spectator. The Spectator's commissioning editor is married to Dominic Cummings. Various press spokespeople might have been present at these parties they now deny. They often come, there's a revolving door from the Mail and the Sun into number 10 and then back out again. Sir Robbie Gibb, who used to be Andrew Neil's producer of the BBC and head of Westminster coverage, he went to become Theresa May's press spokesperson. So you can see this cartel, this revolving door of people who are supposed to be reporting on politics, but are actually part of it. Now, I'm not making any personal accusations against any of these people. They are just like fish swimming in the water, which they don't realize has been poisoned. But how can you cover the story when it's your partner or your boyfriend or your wife or your husband who is the story? How can you be a political journalist if you spend weekends at checkers with them or are their godparent or go to their christenings? You are compromised. Your friendship is more important than the public interest. Your private interest trumps the public interest. And that's where the problem begins. Because every journalist, whether they work for ITV, BBC, Byline Times, Double Down News, Open Democracy, The Telegraph, The Mail, The Sun, The Guardian, the so-called independent, should be Focus on the interests of their readers, not their private interests. But of course, we live in a world where it's completely the other way around. We live in a world where most of the mainstream press, the private interests dominate. And there's a good reason for that. Most of them don't make any money from the public. They get government subsidies or are funded by oligarchs big businessmen who are resident overseas for tax purposes or foreign citizens, as in the case of Rupert Murdoch, who was Australian, who had to get American citizenship, because that's the only way you can own a TV station in America. Whereas here, we don't care if GB News is owned by some hedge fund in Dubai. So how do these non-DOM owners of the press manage to disguise their role in the public discourse, disguise their partiality to people like Johnson? How do they manage to twist this round to think they're the outsiders? Well, what they do is they demonize foreigners of people of color, any asylum seekers. There's always these external threats, travelers, trans people. That's what they need is an enemy over there to forget the real enemy in our midst, I'd say. What they profoundly do is make it seem like they are not in control. So, Charles Moore, who Boris Johnson flew to COP26 to eat pheasant at the Garrett Club and discuss Owen Paterson's future. Well, Baron Moore of Etchingham claims that the problem with the UK is the establishment won't tolerate Boris Johnson. Extraordinarily, Paul Dacre, a multimillionaire who left the mail for a while to get a job at Ofcom, when he didn't get that because he was supremely unqualified because it requires objectivity and understanding of broadcast and fairness, which he has not ever demonstrated with other mail, he comes back and says, it's the establishment that stopped him. Boris Johnson has invaded against the establishment too, talking about the dominance of Islington lawyers. Well, for 20 years, he lived with a lawyer in Islington. And that's what they do. That's what populism does. It says it's talking for the people, just like the press always. We're speaking for our readers. But what it does is create enemies over there while they raid the coffers, while they are actually the elites that they disguise. They create fake enemies, fake elites, while they take over. 
And even if Boris Johnson goes, they will want their person there. They need their person there. So these two organizations, the fourth estate, supposed to be looking at the executive, supposed to be protecting us against the wrongs of politicians. Instead, what? They join together. They're a joint enterprise. Same interests. They want to repatriate their profits. They don't want to pay tax here. They want to control the state. They are actually not a part of. And the danger, even with this current spate of press scandals about Johnson and media scandals, is are they doing it in our interest or theirs? Are they holding power to account or are they holding it hostage? Famously, in the Sun newspaper owned by Rupert Murdoch, there was a seven foot high safe filled with eye-popping content of public figures, politicians, and celebrities. I mean, that's a safe full of compromat. They called it the Black Museum in the Sun newspaper itself. And it's quite well known, his biographer Michael Wolf says that Rupert, when you talk to a politician, to Rupert Murdoch, he'd say, oh, we got a photograph of him. The implication is they have a photograph, a compromising photograph of this politician. Michael Wolf thinks maybe he doesn't, and he possibly thinks he has but doesn't. But it doesn't matter. The fear, the absolute chilling fear politicians have of our press if you cross them is pure compromise. And I think one of the things that Double Down tries to do, we try to do at Byline Times, is not only expose wrongdoing, scandals, political demonization of minorities, but show how the media is part of that. In this information age, information is warfare and they will hide stuff, they will spin it to their advantage, not for the public's advantage. And that's the battle forward. If Boris Johnson goes, then whoever replaces him mustn't be just a creation of that corrupt cartel which created him and Gove. This country has suffered massively because the non-don owners whose interests are overseas have dominated political discourse. Nobody is looking after the interests of the British people. Whether it's your right, left or centre, go and find a reliable news source. Go and find people who are not lying to you, who are talking to you genuinely, giving information your interest. Now, what do you want to do with that information? What political decisions you make? That's up to you. We can't tell people what to think. But give them some truth, some information to make an informed decision because democracy needs information. You can't have a democracy in a fictional house of cards, which we currently have at number 10. That is not democracy. It's a pantomime. And with every pantomime or puppet show, you've got to ask, who's pulling the strings? Well, there's one way of breaking this media cartel, a very, very simple one, and that's support Double Down News and Byline Times on patreon.com or bylandtimes.com. So join the future of journalism, break that media cartel, and join Double Down News on Patreon.